Hi, welcome back to IndyCar with me, Gordon Ross, on the 3rd of June. Now, it's uh, it's often said that, that uh, a country like Scotland, which is not independent at the moment, but aspires to become independent, should really start to behave uh, as if it were an independent country before it actually votes to become independent. And that is already happening uh, with green industries in Scotland. A new report published today shows that um, Scotland's renewable energy sector is now producing 97% of Scotland's energy needs entirely from offshore wind, onshore wind and tidal resources entirely. So no, virtually no fuel burning at all producing Scotland's electrical power. Now, not only are we producing our own power without burning anything, uh, these industries are also supporting somewhere in the region of 26,000 plus full-time jobs. And these are all high-tech jobs uh, requiring university graduates, uh, as well as engineers, uh, electricians, and many, many other skills uh, involved in the renewable energy industry. And as I've mentioned many times before, the potential for particularly tidal energy and other offshore sources of energy is absolutely enormous around Scotland's coast. Now, as well as that, uh, we have to link up this policy of creating new industries. And as we start to abandon the oil industry, and if you if you think back down the ages, uh, Scotland has, like other parts of Western Europe through the last two or three centuries, moved from cutting down trees and burning those to keep warm to digging up coal and burning that to keep warm and also for transportation uh, and for industry, then abandoning coal in favour of oil, uh, using oil to generate power, <coughs> using oil for our fuel and using gas, which comes up with the oil as well, for heating and, uh, and other forms of generation. Now, we've, we've moved basically from wood through coal through oil. This is the age of combustion. And the age of combustion is just about coming to an end and we're moving towards the age of electrical power generated entirely from natural sources. Now, this is a, a very important part of Scotland's future and in fact not is it the, just an important part, it's probably the most important part because not only does it provide jobs, not only does it provide income and export income as well from the surplus energy we will produce in the future, it's also um, not just mitigating our carbon footprint, it's eliminating it completely. We're removing our own contribution to global pollution uh, just simply by moving from one source of energy to another. Now, not only do we have to produce energy, but there are also lots of other subsidiary industries which are going to grow as a result of the uh, Scottish Government's new green policies. One of these was announced uh, recently in a trade magazine. Uh, you may, may be aware that uh, most of the ports in Scotland are actually owned by a single company called Peel Ports. And Peel Ports has announced today, in partnership uh, with uh, an energy company, that they're planning to build a waste to hydrogen plant at the Rothsea docks on the Clyde. Now, a waste to hydrogen plant uh, is not an incinerator. Uh, a lot of people get confused, think they're going to burn the rubbish to produce power. That's not what's happening here. A, a waste to hydrogen plant simply takes plastic waste, which cannot normally be recycled at all, the kind of stuff that goes to landfill usually or ends up being incinerated and polluting the atmosphere, and breaks it down into its chemical components releasing hydrogen, which is then to be used as a fuel. Now, hydrogen, as you may be aware, is just made up of uh, hydrogen. There's nothing else in it. But when you burn hydrogen with oxygen, you produce water and power. So it's an entirely clean form of energy if you burn it, which is actually a rather more... Uh, a rather better way of heating your home than using natural gas, which is methane or methane, which contains carbon. So there is the potential through uh, projects like this, producing hydrogen from waste material uh, to heat our homes with this particular fuel, entirely green, uh, without any pollution at all. There are, I have to say, <coughs> to say there's no pollution at all is probably inaccurate. There is a small amount uh, of nitrogen oxides produced when you burn hydrogen with air because air is 80% nitrogen. However, this is nothing like the problem that we would have burning methane, which produces large amounts of carbon dioxide, the known greenhouse gas. So Scotland is moving not only towards green energy, and it's not only 
moving towards it, it has almost attained complete uh, energy production entirely from wind, tide, solar and, uh, and tidal. So we're almost on the brink of becoming an entirely carbon free uh, economy when it comes to electrical energy. Removing waste plastics is one of the biggest current problems in the world. Most of these waste plastics include things like plastic bottles, which, if you know anything about plastics, are made from PET, which is a form of polyester, which takes hundreds of years to break down in the, the natural environment. When it does break down, it tends to grind down into what's known as microplastics, which then get into the food chain and we actually start eating our own waste. So microplastics are in the ocean at the moment and the only way really to get rid of them is actually to stop producing the waste plastic or to completely recycle it. And that is exactly what Peel Ports is planning to do. So I, I applaud Peel Ports and their uh, board of directors and the, the partner company which they have teamed up with to produce not just one of these waste, uh, waste to hydrogen plants in Scotland, but they're going to be all over the United Kingdom. So I would hope that Peel Ports would also start to develop other sites and other ports around Scotland as a result if this one is successful. And not only that, but uh, a country like Scotland, which is planning to become independent, uh, needs, as I say, to act as though it is independent. So it's already doing that with its energy production. It's starting to do that with its waste uh, recycling uh, industries as well. And I would imagine that more jobs, hundreds or thousands of jobs will be created in the recycling industry, disposing of waste plastics, which already exist. But rather than keeping on producing these single use plastics, I think there has to be another policy alongside this of eliminating that waste completely and actually utilizing the plastics that we obtain from oil polymers we obtain from oil to produce much larger pl plastic items. For example, things like car body panels, which are entirely reusable. In other words, if you have a car which uh, has a steel frame, but is, its body panels are made of plastic, which is self-colored, um, if you damage a panel or you simply want to change the look of your car, all the panels can be stripped off, thrown in the chipper, <coughs> melted back down and turned into new panels. And this is something which will happen in the future. I've also mentioned many times that uh, with hydrogen being a very efficient form of fuel, you can fuel a car in hydrogen by putting a hydrogen gas tank under the floor of your car. You can run that through what's known as a hydrogen fuel cell. And that is just a method where the hydrogen uh, and oxygen in the air are recombined and produce electricity, much like a battery does. I've also mentioned many times that it's high time that Scotland had its own automobile manufacturer. And there is a hydrogen car already in existence, which is being developed in Wales. At the moment, it's struggling to get a toehold in the market because of lack of investment. But I think it's high time the Scottish Government offered the company in Wales the chance to set up a major manufacturing facility in Scotland. Peel Ports has already said that as a part of their new uh, waste to hydrogen plant at Rothsey Dock, they're going to actually put on site a hydrogen refuelling station, which will allow anybody with a hydrogen powered vehicle to top up their tanks at this station. And this will be the start I think, of an expanding uh, network of hydrogen gas refilling stations. Now, if, if this is done, if the Scottish Government follows this path to its natural conclusion, as well as having battery operated cars, which we're all familiar with, which are charged at home using domestic electricity or charging points, there can also be a correspondingly large number of hydrogen powered electric cars, which work in a similar way using electrical energy to power the engine, but using hydrogen as the source of energy. Now, if that's the case, hydrogen can be refilled much more quickly at a refilling station than electricity can be charged into a battery. And that makes it a very attractive proposition for things like trucking, for buses, uh, and for all kinds of vehicles, including incidentally, possibly airplanes as well. So I have a strong <laughs> inclination at the moment to say to the Scottish government, approach this company in Wales. The company is called River Simple. They have developed a beautiful little car uh, called the Rasa, which at the moment is a two seat coupe. Uh, which runs on hydrogen gas uh, and has 
re remarkable success in, in what it's been doing so far. They're in the beta testing phase just now in Wales where they are giving the car to members of the public to drive and getting their feedback from their experience of driving this new hydrogen powered car. And all the feedback has been tremendous so far. But the problem is that the British government is not interested in investing in River Simple. And I think the Scottish government, if it's smart, would approach River Simple and offer them the chance to develop a full scale manufacturing plant for this hydrogen car somewhere nearby to the, the new waste to hydrogen stations to create a starting point for a new Scottish uh, entirely green car industry. This can be a collaboration between the, the Welsh devolved parliament and the Scottish devolved parliament, setting up a new, perhaps nationalised or at least a, a not-for-profit company. I know that River Simple are offering lots of different ways uh, to use their cars that sometimes involve not owning them at all, but actually just having a lease on the car. I'm sure River Simple would be delighted if the Scottish government came to them with a, a proposition like this to produce a huge number of such cars and cars developed from their technology, but in such a way that they're affordable to members of the public in a variety of different ways. So in other words, you might be able to lease the car uh, for a number of years without ever owning it and just swap it out as we often do with cars these days. Uh, I mean, I'm sitting in a leased car at the moment, which I have for two years, and then I send it back and get a fresh one. So you don't have to own a car to enjoy the privileges of driving it. So this is, if you like, my own vision of the future for Scotland, but I can see a starting point beginning to emerge now. And as we move towards our voting to vote for independence, it's very important that we can demonstrate to, at the moment, people who doubt our ability to survive as an independent country, that not only do we have a vibrant new set of industries, but these industries are going to create and sustain tens of thousands of new jobs into the future. And also that car ownership or car use and car uh, driving are going to become not, not the privilege of the wealthy few, but be accessible to all of us. Uh, and all of us who wish to drive electric vehicles powered either by battery or car or uh, uh, fuel cells will be able to do so. This is a, I suppose, an ambition I've had for a long time is for the electrical system in Scotland to be nationalised so that it becomes a resource for everybody and any profits that are made from it from, for example, selling energy, surplus energy overseas are ploughed back into reducing the costs of energy for our own industries and our own households. Remember that renewable electricity can also be used to create hydrogen from seawater. This is another growth industry which is just beginning to start. Uh, it's in its testing phases at the moment uh, on Orkney. So I would anticipate all of these things starting to happen. So Scotland has a fantastic future ahead of it. And with all the doom and gloom around us at the moment, um, surrounding COVID-19 and the British government's Brexit deal and all the rest of it, it's worth remembering that there is a great future ahead for Scotland if it keeps following this path. And I believe that the Scottish government has that in its sights at the moment. And because the Scottish government is a government, it has to govern the country. It has to uh, invest in these industries. And I believe the next logical step after the uh, introduction of these waste to hydrogen plants in Scotland is to do a deal with the Welsh company through the Welsh government and the Scottish government working together, maybe to create two manufacturing plants, one in Scotland and one in Wales, creating jobs in both countries. This can be done. It can be done without the interference of the British government. And although we don't have the kind of grant aid for development from the European Union at the moment, if we make a start on this industry now, when we do become independent, the European Union, I am certain, will be interested in investing in this kind of industry because it's precisely what the European Union wants to do with its own economy. It wants to decarbonise, it wants to encourage electric car use, carbon-free car use, and also Instead of wasting the, the oil that we're currently extracting from the North Sea, if we turn that into large-scale plastic components that can be endlessly recycled, then that resource, instead of burning it, becomes a valuable commodity for the production of everything. 
everything from furniture to car body panels, aeroplane panels, you name it. Plastics can be used in a huge variety of ways. They're not necessarily the enemy. I worked with plastic for something like 17 years in product design. And I know one thing for sure is that if you pick the right plastic and you manufacture the components, in a large scale and they're not just for single use and they have a recycling system built in then those materials never leave the cycle and so we need less and less oil in order to produce more new products the new products are simply made from the old products and this is known as a circular economy this is part of the scheme Anyway, all of these things I hope are of interest to you, but I wanted just to remind the people of Scotland that in the midst of all the doom and gloom and all of the um, depressing news that we hear from around the world at the moment, part of the recovery from COVID must involve becoming independent and developing these industries to their full extent. And it's very important that the Scottish government uh, takes these industries into public ownership at the outset so that it's not just private companies who are going to benefit from these, although those private companies should be rewarded for their investment initially so that they do make a profit from uh, investing in the, building these industries. But once the industries are mature, the profits should be ploughed back into the public good. And this is something which I believe Scotland can do, a new economic model, a circular economy where we don't waste anything. Uh, and all the valuable commodities that we have that are surplus, that we don't need, we can sell abroad, including energy, including large-scale plastics, including the equipment and machinery to recycle those endlessly for other countries. One of the beautiful things about living in Scotland is the, the massively educated workforce that we have. Scotland is full of smart, well-educated people. And it's the next generation of these smart, educated young people who will be leading the vanguard of this new age. We need to be part of it, and our government needs to emphasise this throughout the next independence campaign, that we are going to be independent in energy, independent in manufacturing. We're going to build these industries, and it's the public, it's the people who are going to benefit from them, not private industries forever and ever. If you take profits out of these big industries, then the value is lost to the people who are at the bottom of the, the pile, if you like, the people who actually buy the products. There are many, many different ways in which commodities can be used. And we are only at the beginning of this new age. And I think Scotland should be leading by example. When COP26 happens in Glasgow in November, it would be nice to see this kind of thinking evident in the Scottish Government's presentations, because I would expect the Scottish Government to be, it already is, I mean, it's going to plant 18 million new trees, amongst many other uh, projects that it has already started. Affordable homes is the next thing. Um, we need to start thinking of timber-built houses because it's so much faster to build with timber. We could clear fell all of these um, monoculture forests that we have in Scotland completely, use them to build hundreds of thousands of new homes and replant the woodlands with native species to try and rewild these areas. There's so many, so many things that need to be done that can only be done when you're independent. Um, but we must make a start and I believe the Scottish Government is already doing so and it's interesting that companies are jumping in here with both feet and Peelports is just the start. Let's hope that Somewhere in the Scottish Government, people are watching this programme and listening because these ideas are not my ideas. These are ideas that are already happening, already being developed. It's just that we're not being made aware of them enough. These are the selling points for independent Scotland. These are the positives. These are the things that will drive Scotland's economy and will attract investment, attract people to come to Scotland to work and build a thriving, busy energetic economy with zero pollution. Anyway, that's my spiel for today. I'm going to step off my soapbox and uh, go and do some actual work now. So I'll see you all tonight on Scotland at 7, 7 o'clock tonight, Broadcasting Scotland channel on YouTube. See you then. Bye-bye.